Hello everyone. We have been going through a very, very interesting session on insulin pumps. We have seen the whole journey of how pumps were uh, evolving over time. We have seen all the practical usage of how to actually use a pump, how to effectively use it for dose titration, perfect dosing, etc. Now I am going to take you in the next 15 minutes just a few interesting cases of people with type 1 diabetes who are using pumps. Now this case-based thought that we are having that we are going to talk about is just one second please. Yes, I uh, chose these cases because we are very enthusiastic about using the pumps. It's a lot of technology. We have seen the way we can solve issues and that enthusiasm sometimes becomes misplaced either because of our misjudgment or the uh, the way the patient is wired and their family. So it is an individualization which I want to emphasize and very strange kind of scenarios can be created which are the cases that I am going to highlight today. So one size does not fit all and that is very very important. Uh, I have so many children and families with type 1 diabetes and seeing all the social media posts, seeing a lot of science, reading, uh, all of them for them especially from the lower socioeconomic areas it has become an aspiration. It has just become something very very cool to have and uh, uh, unless and until it goes beyond that, uh, it will probably not be the right thing to have. And unfortunately, I also see in this part of the region uh, where the prescribing doctor is not also very sure who is the right candidate or how to prime a person to go on to a pump. And so these are the few cases that I want to showcase both the sides of it, a good use as well as uh, not so good use simply for the purpose of practical learning as we go into the journey of the insulin pump and this is specifically for people who are not well versed with it we're not using it every day in their clinics those who are experts are already very well versed with the various aspects of pump care so my first case is farzana and farzana uh, came to us with a 12 year she's a 12 year old girl her parents or have big businesses, money is not an issue. She was started with us, she came with a uh, very high HPLNC and she was started on the uh, MDI basis bolus therapy. She was enrolled for structured education. But from day one, the attitude of the parents were, we don't want pricks for my daughter. Oh, my daughter's fine skin, she's so fair, her skin is so, you know, th all that kind of aspect. There was very little focus on her growth, health, future. And we kept on trying to bring it back to them with our entire team, with all the experience we had, but we found us failing because the entire focus was that why is my daughter getting pricked and when we enrolled them to for the education part the response was not very good they were very upset with us they did not like us and in the third visit which is like within a month of their uh, being uh, one and a half months of being detected the patient the, the family the parents they came back with the child already on a pump and they had uh, found out I mean we have the whole internet they found the company person they bought the pump out right they got it installed and it was being titrated or something some support was being given by the company person now we said okay this is done let us now you know, educate you regarding how we use the pump. But the parents were very busy. They had big businesses, both the parents were traveling all the time and they felt now their daughter is safe. She is on a pump. They were not interested in the fuss that we were creating about how do we adjust the doses, how do we eat, all the other aspects were not interested. They felt we were very fussy about everything. They were just happy that there are less injections. Six months later, we met her again. And because obviously they were not very happy with us, so they're not coming to us. And HPA1C was still 11.5. So uh, my point here is the pump is definitely smart, but we always think of a person with the pump is smarter. To use a smart pump, we need a smart person and definitely a person who is using its smartness for the right reason. So with all the money and education and availability and support, yet Farzana even today is not doing well. Now it's almost a year and uh, I do not know whether it's our counseling skills or what, 
but so far she they are not motivated to use the pump effectively with the magic that it can do it has not been used we have shorya the second case i would like to talk about is shorya shorya's parents are school teachers and they live in a very semi semi urban town near aurangabad shorya is 5 year old and they shifted the child to their own school once she had type 1 diabetes they spent 3 uh, months with us uh, attending every class the online classes the physical classes the one on one training and once they realized the kind of care she needed they actually pulled in took money out of uh, advance out of the provident fund and they found a, they bought a pump and a ccms they learned the details so these are um, not really very rich people they work in a so, small schools in a semi urban town in marathwada but they prioritize the care they wanted to give their child and realize that she has a whole you know two decades growing up and that is a time that she needs perfect control her puberty has to set in so all those things they appreciated that they learned the nitty gritties of carb counting dose adjustment and the optimal use of pump they keep reading they keep asking questions we keep referring them to anything new that we have we keep sending them links now she maintains a beautiful hp1c she is 10 years old now and she knows her pump very well she is a sprinter she takes part in every possible sports activity in the school she is into athletics and also we keep teasing her that she is really good at maths so she is really ready to move on to the next uh, model she comes up with new things all the time and i see the potential in her that we are going to talk about the diy things and all kinds of things she has questions answers and she finds a lot of creative ways and she sees those numbers as a a uh, challenge like a maths problem and she is doing well so this is another way in the same scenario but uh, with a lot of uh, insight into why they are on a pump and that is what made a difference so money is not a limiting factor is what i learned here it is the attitude those parents farzana's parents had a lot of money but their attitude was simply to use the pump as a way of uh, limiting the prick the number of injections that their daughter had they were not willing to understand what the child needs and hence invest time at all i mean not even when we were trying to hand hold them on the phone we said we'll do online classes for you but nothing they just did not want to do that so they were in a phase of denial hopefully they will learn uh before it's too late and uh, on the other hand shorya's parents maybe have been school teachers help but they actually pulled all their resources and they are trying to bring up a daughter who is very self reliant capable of taking care of herself so attitude really matters every person who can afford should be on a pump would not work without all these little factors another very interesting case that i would like to highlight our in insulin pump uh, users that i had seen recently is uh, asha asha says she wanted a baby right she is 29 years old she is living with type 1 diabetes for 7 years she had type 1 diabetes a year after she got married so she was an adult she got married at the age of 22 and that is when she had type 1 diabetes her husband took reasonably good care of her and uh, i mean why am i emphasizing this this is what we learned in history that even throughout the time it was the husband who took care of her so she always used to say that my husband took good care of me he was take she was on a uh, mdi basal bolus insulin but uh, we saw her past record and the hp1c was never below 8 but they were sort of satisfied that life was okay till she became pregnant and he was working he could not hand hold her throughout they could not manage the diabetes and probably other thing and they lost the baby again okay, she became pregnant we do not have a record of uh, what happened what the doctor said was she counseled but from whatever i could understand from talking to her because there was no paper record but uh, some sort of counseling was done specifically saying that your blood sugar levels should be controlled that was the only thing that they knew but how was another thing by itself 
So she became pregnant again and then she was told by the gynecologist, your sugar has to be very well controlled. So they went to a doctor and the doctor said that one way of controlling the blood sugar levels very well is an insulin pump. Now she went on to the insulin pump. The husband is not that rich, but yes, for a baby and a, uh, not wanting to lose another baby, he actually uh, invested on the pump, but he did not have time to handhold her with the pump. Right. So he gave her the pump and she was on the insulin pump, being treated, some doses adjusted by the people who gave her the pump, but they did not have a proper pump training. Nobody was really there to know what to do with it except deliver the insulin, which was initially being in, uh, delivered by a device or a syringe. And that was done by the pump. So not much really happened. And she again lost her baby with haywire sugars. And this was so sad. And this is what we came to know when she came to us. When she came to us, she was again pregnant six weeks. For some reason, uh, planned pregnancies, good control was just not happening. I'm sure the doctors had guided her, but she could not follow that. Then we realized when they came to us that the couple had very, very little knowledge of diabetes self-management and the husband was smart, but he was very busy. They're young, they had a business to do and he was now frustrated that his wife is not able to bear a healthy baby. He kept on saying that because of her diabetes, she's not able to have a baby. But then uh, we showed her so many other girls around us who have had healthy and happy pregnancies in type 1 diabetes and that sort of gave him hope. And then after talking to Asha, we realized that her IQ was actually low. She was not being careless because the husband kept on blaming her. She doesn't do this. She doesn't do that. She, do I bought her a pump and she doesn't manage. She, do cannot, she does not check enough. She doesn't adjust her doses. But after talking to her, we realized it is not about not wanting to do. She was wanting to do. She did make an attempt, but her basic IQ was low. She was not capable. I mean, we did all kinds of testing with her and we realized that she could not interpret or take an action to the readings that she saw. While she could actually see them, but she did not have the intelligence to interpret and take an action. So we continued her on her pump, added flash monitoring because she was on a basic pump and then gave her a 24 by 7 helpline support. So with that, every day, I mean, literally uh, till the baby was in her arms and of course, after that as well, she and our diabetes educator were 24 by 7. It became a joke with us that there was umbilical cord between the three of them, not just the two of them. And it was a 24 by 7 kind of support because there was absolutely no way. So she could just tell, she send snapshots and that has how she was being taken care of snapshots of the meal, snapshots of the flash monitoring screen, flash, uh, all that happened and she delivered a healthy baby girl. But post delivery uh, for another month, we continued same way. But later on, then we shifted her back to MDI because this kind of 24 by 7 um, you know, hand holding would not be practical. She was not at all able to handle the pump on her own. She does her basic care. Uh, she has been given warning signs of the minimum and maximum. And weekly, she reviews with a diabetes educator online. And she is doing very well and very happy with her daughter growing up very happily. So uh, my take, why did I share this case? That a prescription is not enough, right? So we as... Uh, physicians, as clinicians, as diabetologists, somewhere uh, we get very excited with technology and we want to see this as a solution. We want our patients very well controlled, but prescribing an insulin pump gives the patient hope and they will buy it, invest it, but that's just not enough. So in part of the country where I live, there are very few training centers. There are very few people who would uh, assess, then prescribe, and then handhold them till they are trained and then what happens. So that whole process is very important. And like we said, Asha, she just could not have handled it. So uh, it's very, very uh, crucial that pump be used in the right person at the right time, as that is again a point to that effect. Uh, one of the cases that I would like to share is uh, Anil. 
Anil uh, was uh, came to us with total desperation. He said, "This is uh, this is the worst disease ever. Nothing in the world can control me." And he was not even interested in listening to us because he said, "I've been to so many doctors. This is hopeless." Somebody caught hold of him and brought him here. He's thirty eight years old, has uh, IBS, uh, and had a very very rapid gastric emptying. He was uh, being treated by the gastroenterologist for that. Repeated hospitalizations with severe hypoglycemia, which had really made his life horrible, which you can all imagine. And he also had hypoglycemic unawareness with 25 years of type 1 diabetes. And of course, repeated hypoglycemias had made him totally unaware. So he would go into a very, very, very low sugar and just collapse and then go to the hospital. So his life was totally in and out of hospital for last many years. He lives in a small town and he went to various places, big town, showing doctors. Everywhere, the focus was on his stomach. Uh, quote unquote stomach. So everyone sent him to different gastroenterologists. All the investigations were done, but everything was done in track with his uh, uh, IBS rather than any aspect of control on diabetes. So whatever was talked to him about diabetes was take care of your diabetes, take care of your diabetes. But he was not at he was clueless that what can he do when he is in such a situation. So first we went one step and put him on continuous monitoring and then later on to the insulin pump he was initially very hesitant but when he did continuous monitoring then he realized uh, strangely i mean i'm very sad but uh, strangely maybe five years back it was not such a big thing but he was not advised that he could be on continuous monitoring and then he was on cgms and then he realized what it can do that he can actually see his sugars he can take some action but yet hypos were occurring and because he could not take uh, appropriate action and then we asked him to do an insulin pump trial so and he with his insulin pump and continuous monitoring he is now three years he had one hospitalization of course he still had hypoglycemias there still episodes happen and he's able to but two severe hypoglycemias one hospitalization in three years his quality of life has become amazing i mean that man who never went anywhere had no social life would not smile that person is a transformed person right now and now with the new pumps coming in with the whole uh, connectivity and the logarithms and so he is now very willing to explore the latest in technology and now he knows much more than i do about pumps and cgms and technology because he reaches out, learns the latest, finds out and he knows what he wants and he wants to perfect his own diabetes care to suit other ailments. So this is one very uh, specific case which made uh, me want to present this that special people need special solutions. So there are so many reasons we prescribe a pump. This is probably one of the uh, beautiful outcomes I saw because it was not just a control but it is an entire quality of life of that person changing because they went into the insulin pump therapy. The last case I would like to share is uh, I called a doctor and a patient because Geeta is 42 years old and has had type 1 diabetes for 22 years. She herself is a physician and managed very well on MDI till now and was not interested in the pump. Whenever we talked, we had an interaction, she would say that, no, I am so good. I I know my body. I know how to do all those things. And I know the calculations. And why do I want to invest in a pump? I and mean, it's just one fancy gadget. There's no value addition. When I'm not getting nocturnal hypoglycemias, why do I need that? So all the way, she was very not keen on the pump. And we also did not insist because she actually did take good care of herself but then because she was married to a physician both of them decided to start a new hospital then their work hours really got crazy getting good control and especially not getting hypoglycemias became more and more difficult with time with the construction with the patient with the icu admin we all know what uh, happens and uh, but for a very long time she was resistant because for her it she you know she felt very capable she said i don't need a pump and she was not very uh, you know, she felt that using a pump is like, I need help. 
and uh, that was another very interesting attitude i saw in her and i don't need help i can do this myself but then we convinced her to do a trial and today she's a hardcore fan she swears that her efficiency has actually doubled she loves the way she manages herself she loves the way how uh, carefree she is how the same uh, inputs that she had the same knowledge that she has gives her such better results with a better quality of life and efficiency and she often wonders whenever she meets me she always says why didn't i do this before why didn't i listen to her earlier and she probably looks out for all her patients who can be on a pump and uh, she would be happy to prescribe so a little nudge can often go a long way there are different reasons for people wanting to go on a pump there are different reasons they should go on a pump and there are different reasons why people resist going on a pump so short of always talking about not having adequate money which is not the only limiting factor there are so many aspects where even in lack of money it would make sense for example that person with ibs i mean the number of hospitalizations that that person had gone through that anil had gone through would be is crazy the amount of money you would have spent on hospitalization is just i mean unbelievable so what we would that pump was nothing as compared to that so it's a very relative amount so these were a few cases that i wish to talk about and uh, my message here would be that every person with type 1 diabetes should be aware of the pump it's a very very individualized approach a capability of a person not just financially but mentally emotionally socially and especially the willingness to take part in the process of learning and implementing taking actions without which it would not really have the impact that we are wanting to have in our patients and there are so many special situations and there are some situations where nothing is a problem but it just takes you one notch better and gives you a better quality of life and with this i would like to say thank you thank you and uh, let us all use pumps effectively and not deprive a person where needed thank you so much